الحمد لمن هداني لسنة العدنان محمد المختار وسيد الأطهار ف... Nice, mashallah. Nice to see you guys. Are you already Muslim or? Mashallah, excellent. What's holding you back? Come on. <laughs> so do you believe in God already? Um, okay, raised Christian. I mean, many. I grew up going to church and stuff like that as well. But what is your belief? Do you believe that God is one great creator? Yeah, we agree. Oh, don't be shy. We're all amongst friends. So, when you have that belief already, you know there's a God. Like you pray. You know you have that already, right? Do you believe that that God would? would be all-knowing, all-able, right? Like the God you pray to, He knows everything, right? Yeah. He knows what's in your heart, He knows what will happen, what could happen, right? But you know, even in the Bible, Jesus didn't know when the hour is, right? So you see, this idea that people have kind of made that Jesus was God, even their own Bible, even with all the changes and stuff that they have today, it doesn't fit, right? Let me show it to you. They threw him and they made a huge fire. They threw him the fire, but God made the fire. All right. Uh, uh, so many verses, so little time. God is one, only God knows, okay. But that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. This is in Mark 13, 32, right? So not even the Son. So if Jesus didn't know when the hour is, right? Doesn't it make sense that He's not God Himself? Right? Even if you look at Jesus saying that the God that the Father is greater than me, right? You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Right? Growing up, I'm sure they told you Jesus is God. Right? But how can he be God and God be greater than him? Right? How could he pray to God if he is God? Um, let me show you here in Acts 3.13. Right? And this is the Bible. This is not the Quran or something, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. Right? Whom you de delivered up. Right? I mean, you can take a picture. I can send you these verses. I mean, I'm sure if you watch the videos, you can see them. I mean, it's in Acts. 3.13, right? In the New Testament, in the Bible. So now think about that. If he's a servant of God that God sent, how could he be God? Well, my mom raised me believing that that was his son. Okay, so so let's think about that, right? How, how did she get the idea that that's his son from the Bible, right? Okay, let me show you now. This is the Bible, Old Testament, Exodus. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Okay, now let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 6, uh, no, sorry, chapter 7, verses 13 14. This is about Solomon. He shall build a house for my name, and I shall establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, he shall be my son. All right? We're not done yet. All right? Jeremiah 31, 9. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim, Ephraim is my firstborn. Right? Let's look at the genealogy of Jesus, right? Where it goes on, it ends. The son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So Adam is called the son of God. Ephraim is called the son of God. David is called the son of God. Solomon is called the son of God. How many kids does God have? Right? So you know what happened? is you have a term of endearment, right? For example, uh, Catholics, if you go to a Catholic uh, church and you say, uh, Father, forgive me for I have sinned, right? When you say Father, do you mean that like him and your mama were, you know? No, you just mean it as respect, right? An elder person may say, hey, son, let me holler at you, right? He's calling him son out of a term of endearment. In that way, David is called a son. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it already, but if not, in the book of Psalms, 
second, second Psalms, verse 7. This is David, this Old Testament, right? I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. David, right? Today I have begotten you even, right? But then Christians will say, oh no, 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 that's not a literal son, it's just a term of endearment. Well, if that's a term of endearment, how did you make Jesus the literal son, right? Some may come back and say, well, he didn't have a father, okay? Who was Adam's father? Who was Adam's mother? Right? Those aren't literally children of God. You can say in a term of endearment, or you know, some Christians may say in a term of spirituality, but not actual children of God. God doesn't have kids. God doesn't have wives, baby mamas, baby daddies, girlfriends, you know, uh, affairs. Like these are these are human relations. God is above all that, right? So after death, where do you guys believe Great question. All right, we're getting there. So you know, it's funny because before we got here, she said she had no questions. No, she got she got questions. She got questions. We got. I can tell those 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 rules are cranking. All right. So we believe this life is only a temporary abode. Meaning, look, you aren't just this life. Before this life, you were in the womb of the mother, right? That was a different life. You were alive, but reality was different. Meaning, you would breathe in through liquid. Today, if I put liquid down my nose, I die. Right? But the baby in the womb, it lives on liquid. It's a different type of life. It doesn't see people. It doesn't interact. It doesn't eat with their mouth. There's an umbilical cord that feeds you. Right? That was a life for nine months, about. Right? Before that, there you go, right? You got one right there, right? Before that, you were a soul. We call ruh. A soul, right? And that was a, a life called Alam al Arwah, the, the, the life of being souls. And the Prophet told us you met people. That's why sometimes, like I met the brother, I don't even know him. I could see him from afar, I like the brother, right? Why? Just because we could have had a connection already, right? Before, maybe when you two met, so on, right? Sometimes you meet somebody and you're like, oh, I'm good, no, I'm not trying to talk to that. You feel me, right? So that, that means we had this prior interaction. So at a time we were souls, that, that life ended when we were in the womb of the mother. Then we had the life of the womb of the mother that ended at nine months, about, right? Then we have the life of this earth. And who knows how long? 10 years, 70 years, 100 years, you live in this life. And then we all die. Allah says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin Every soul shall taste death. And you die from this world, you will go into the grave. And this is called barzakh. This is another life, right? There, your living will be different. You won't eat the way you eat, the way you won't be interacting the way you interact. There is a life, but it's different. Then you will be raised. On the day of judgment, you will, every, all of us will be raised. And Allah will give us a new body. Your body will have deteriorated, it will make it new, right? Now imagine when the Quran was revealed, they couldn't imagine this, right? But they believed in it because the Quran, today with cloning and things, we know it's possible, right? And Allah is the Lord, He can do anything. So then you will be raised again and we will go to account, right? Nobody dies for your sins, this is, this is a fallacy, right? This is just a way to try to get yourself to do any sins you want and blame it. Oh yeah, Jesus died for my sins. And people don't believe that, right? Because if somebody believes, that just believing in Jesus' salvation is free, right? Jesus died for your sins. Then we would say, I guess Hitler's gonna heaven because Hitler believes in Jesus. Like, no, no, he killed people. Well, Jesus died for Hitler, so, you know, but then they don't wanna believe that because hypocrisy, right? Islam's not about hypocrisy. What we say, we do. What we do, we say, right? Christianity is all hypocrisy. Like, even if you look at turn the other cheek, you know, they say, oh, turn the other cheek, right? You, uh, next time you, you see a pastor, just slap him. Just walk by and be like, pow, right? Let me see if he turns the other cheek. Let me see if he doesn't call the police on, he doesn't hit you back, doesn't, you know, uh, there's a ch Christian stall here. I walked to him, I told him, I just want to try out your Bible. You mind if I slap you? They're like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, why not? Your Bible says turn the other cheek. Let me see you practice what you preach. But they won't. The hypocrisy, right? But we don't believe in hypocrisy. On the day of judgment, we will pay account for our own deeds. You will not be held for accountable for his deeds. He will not be accountable for your deeds, for his deeds, everybody for their own. Isn't that fair? Think about this, right? If I kill somebody, right? And I go to a court, a human court, forget about the great and merciful Lord, but a human court, right? And I say, you know what? I killed him, right? Premeditated, I killed him. And the judge says, you're guilty, you did it. But I'll tell you what, I got this son, perfect son, 4.0 student, never did anything wrong. Excellent, always lived a good life, perfect kid. You guys get together and kill him, 
for my murder. Right? Would that make sense to you? Would that be fair? Like a murder, may Allah protect you at all, right? Let's say you have a child and somebody kills your child. May Allah protect them. I'm just giving an example, right? And then the murderer is in court and the judge says, you know what that murderer? He's not going to go to a jail for, his, for murdering your child. Instead, we're just going to kill some innocent guy. Would you agree to that? So how can they have this concept? See, again, it's, it's hypocrisy, right? So in Islam, we don't believe that. We believe on the Day of Judgment. What's your name? Jody. Jody, you will be accountable for Jody's sins. Not for Uthman's sins. What's your name, brother? Derek. Derek. Not for Derek's sins, right? You will pay account. Allah is merciful, right? Allah forgives, right? But we will go to court. We will go to account. And then when you're done, your, your deeds are scaled and weighed and all of that, there's only two destinations left. Either eternal hellfire, may Allah protect us all, or eternal paradise, right? And this is something, this life is that test to earn, right? You didn't come here on accident. Where do you guys live? Oh, Washington, right? Washington, yeah. D.C. or state? Washington State. Washington State. state. Yeah. That's a long way from San Diego, yeah. right? Allah brought you here. Allah made this for you, especially. He's already Muslim, right? <laughs> right? For you to come and hear this message. Right? You weren't even maybe thinking about it. But now you feel it, right? Because this is your point of guidance. Now the question is up to you. You know it makes sense. You know it's right. Now you can accept it or reject it. And that's what you will have to pay account for, right? Whoever accepts the guidance, we all make mistakes. We're all beginners, we're all sinners, we're all... The Prophet Muhammad said, all the children of Adam are sinful, right? But the best of sinners are those who repent, right? When we repent, we don't have to go to some uh, uh, priest and, and, and confess to him. We don't have to kill any innocent people. You just repent. You go to God and say, God, forgive me. You're the most merciful I sinned. Allah forgives. That's the mercy. He doesn't have to kill anybody. Right? Isn't that beautiful? Like, uh, you, you know, like when you want to pray, you can pray directly. Right? It's a spiritual bond between you and your creator. What kind of a creator can't forgive his own creation without killing somebody? Right? That's ruthless. Right? But anyway, so this is what happens on the Day of Judgment. The people who accept that guidance, who do their best to live in accordance to it, they go into their final existence, right? This is where we were meant to be, right? An existence that will last forever. An existence in such a, a beautiful place that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can imagine, right? But it's a test. Who passes, gets that reward. Who fails, gets the punishment. Right? Just like if you, go to, if you go to a university or a school and you're taking a test, they put the timer on, right? Like you got one hour to finish this test. During that hour, you want to focus. Because if you fail, you know, you're going to be, like let's say you're at a university and you fail, you're not going to graduate. You won't get that job you wanted, right? If you pass, you might get that degree and get that really good job and make that really good money. So at that time, you have to focus. So this life is that test, right? What do you think about it? Say, Does it make sense? Yes. I know, because look, it's the same thing with me. Like, so I'm in the military, right? MashaAllah. And uh, one of my platoon sergeants, I wasn't really religious before this. Mm -hmm. And I came to work one day. He had like two Qurans like, sitting on the table. I, I'm not sure where he was from. I think Kenya or something like that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He had two, and I think uh, I think one was his, and he had a brand new one like, just sitting there, right? Nice. So like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we got somebody trying to. We got a tag here last time. I'm trying to, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so you know he had it sitting there, and I like, I would look at it like every day, and I would you know kind of just curious. I would pick it up and look at it. And, like one day he was like, you know you can take it home. You know what I mean. Subhanallah. It's, it's there, right? So I took it home and. For a while, I didn't read it. I, I kind of grew up Christian too, but not really. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, feel you. But even for me, like it didn't make sense. Just, I mean, just reading about G. I, like this is because I would just ask myself, like, well, if he died for everybody's sins, does that mean we could just do whatever we want to do and just at the end right? of my life, I just say, oh, I believe in Jesus. And I'm, that's it. That's, right? That does not make sense. It never yeah. makes sense. To me. I agree. And so I guess I kind of fell off for a little. I just wasn't religious at all for a couple of years, actually. I feel I, you. you. Know, I picked up the Quran. I started reading the Quran. And that, that was pretty much it for me. Everything like that didn't make sense in Christianity. It makes sense. It was, it Alhamdulillah. It just makes you know sense. it makes sense, right? Yeah. So, so you believe sense. in one God, right? Yeah. You believe there's a great creator, right? Yeah. You, you don't believe that creator has kids or wives or uncles or aunts or roommates, right? Okay. You believe that creator sent prophets to guide us, right? So you're a Muslim. 
That's what a Muslim is. You believe in one God, you believe in the prophets, you believe in the last prophet being the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the chain of prophets and guides that Allah sent, beginning with Adam, ending with the prophet Muhammad. We believe in Jesus, you believe in Jesus, we believe in Abraham, you believe in Abraham, we believe in David, you believe in David. But they were prophets. They, were, they worshipped God. They were the servants of God, right? As we are, we're servants. We're not prophets, but we're servants. We're all creation. Allah can create somebody without a father, with a father, without a father or a mother like Adam, without any, you know, from a man and uh, he can create a woman like Eve. He's the creator, right? So do you believe that those who follow Christianity are going to heaven? So the question there being, what does it mean to follow Christianity? Those who follow Jesus himself were Muslim. There's no difference. You can see we have a sign, Jesus is a Muslim, right? Because what is a Muslim? The one who submits their will to their creator, right? But those who worship Jesus, they are not following Jesus because now they're worshiping other than the one creator. What are the Ten Commandments? The first, oh here, oh Israel, your Lord is one. What's the second? Don't worship idols, don't yes. worship given. So when you go to a church and they get they got a big old idol that they're worshiping, we don't believe they're gonna heaven. Well, I grew up on that strictly. My mom was like, no, no idols. No but idols, Jesus. good. Yeah. <laughs> you, see, you see, this is interesting. Like we talk to a lot of Christians here, right? And they'd be like, we don't worship idols. But then when you go into a church, I mean, Catholics, they have everything. They got their mama, their grandma, their auntie, they got saints, they got everybody and their mama, you know, idols in there, right? But even Christians, you go in, you see pictures, you see paintings, you see a, a white guy on a cross, and then you wonder, where'd you get the white guy from? Right? Wait, where's he from, right? Let me ask something. Does your family celebrate Christmas? Yes. Now, now let me show you something, right? This is the this is not a Muslim book. It's called the Uncommon History of Common Things, National Geographic. Right? You can go rent this from a library or thing. I bought it. Uh, let's look up Christmas. Right? I had it marked, but Christmas, right? It came originally as a Roman pagan festival for Saturnalia in honor of Saturn, the god of agriculture, right? 25th of December was a pagan week-long festival, right? How did I get into Christianity, right? It's not in the Bible. Go home and ask your preachers and tell them where is 25th of December the, the birth. The biblical scholars say, according to the Bible's context, it was born in the summer. Right? Where do we get this? Here. In the 4th century, Pope Julius I chose that date as a church holiday in large parts attempting to give a religious cast to Saturnalia, the pagan festival. Pope Julius I, before him, Christians condemned it. Right? Even if you look at the Puritans that settled in America, they forbid the celebration of, of Christmas. In 1659, Oliver Conwell banned uh, Christmas. There's this, there's, you can go and find uh, any pictures of the, of the uh, posters they used to put up. Santa Claus, right? These are all Nordic pagan ideas that then were brought into Christianity under the name of a monk named Saint Nicholas. But before that, it was a Nordic festival, right? So these are pagan festivals that Christians celebrate today. Not even thinking about where is that in the Bible? What does that have to do? What does Santa Claus, reindeer, Christmas trees, gifts, what does that do with Jesus? Easter, right? bunny, if you, Easter? Easter bunny? Uh, you, Easter bunny no. you don't want to know about the history of Easter bunny. That, that's another thing. My mom, she, it's like she told me some of this stuff to even go with Christians. Right. Um, she wanted to make sure we knew. Well, after you become Muslim, you're going to talk to your mom about Islam, right? She, you're going to be the means of guidance for your mom. Right? It just makes sense. Right? So now tell me, does it not make sense that there is one God? Yes, it makes sense. Does it not make sense that Jesus was a prophet as we see in the Bible about him being a servant of God who was sent by God? Especially right? with the verses that, I mean, it's just like the verses that said, like if Jesus is saying, you know, my creator, you can't really deny it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I show right? some of this, like, like some of the videos that you 
You know, I think I saw your videos. Uh, there's another guy I watch on YouTube, uh, uh, Sergeant Lipham. Sergeant's cool, and yeah. I saw him. Sergeant Lipham, yeah. shout out. And that's all on your videos. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You schooling somebody. I'm like, ooh, man, right? You know, but yeah, I ain't gonna do <laughs> Let me show you something, okay? And after this, you're gonna be Muslim. John 17, 3. Okay, in the Bible, right? And you can go home and look all these up. He knows we put the verses on the screen, yep. right? And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So what does it? Only one true God, excluding Jesus. Jesus was sent by that one true God, right? That's a prophet. Prophets are sent, right? You know, if you look at all of this, even if you look at Jesus, what does he say? He says, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, right? Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. You look at this, then you look here in John. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. You see the contradiction, right? Why? Because this book has been changed up, right? I'll show you some clear as day, right? Clear as day. I'm going to have you read for me, all right? I, Isaiah, was how old? 42. 42 years old when he became king and he reigned in one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was? Athalia. Athalia, the granddaughter of Umbra. Okay. How old was he? 42. 42. Now we go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings 8, 26. I say I was 22. 22 years old when he became king. He reigned one year. Now Christians will be like different Isaiah. Okay. His mother's name was Athalia. The granddaughter of Henry. You see? Let me your your mom's well learned, right? Let me ask you this. This is the genealogy of Jesus in the Bible. Matthew. Go home and look at it and you have a Bible at home, right? Chapter one, Matthew one. Verse 16, and Jacob begotten Joseph, the husband of Mary, to whom was born Jesus. So Jacob was the, the father of who? Joseph, Joseph being the husband of Mary, okay? The, the Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? In the same Bible, in Luke now, now Jesus began his ministry about 30 years of age as being the supposed son of Joseph, the son of Eli. What happened to Jacob? You see, when you go home, do a side by side. I have done a side by side. I used to have it in here. Comparison. These names don't match up because these are anonymous authors who later on wrote these trying to put a lineage to Jesus to tie him back to David. The whole lineage is different. Different numbers, there's missing generations. This is a Christian study Bible. Okay, I mean, I'm not, it's not like a Muslim, right? Here, let me show you something. Hebrews. Who wrote Hebrews? In the study Bible, according to Christian MacArthur, right? What does he say? The author of Hebrews is unknown. How can you base your salvation on a book? You don't even know who wrote it, right? Let me show you something. Isaiah, we looked at that earlier, right? We looked at the contradiction. What does the Christian study Bible say? He says, this is a copyist error, right? So they're saying that this is an error of people who were recording. In the Bible today, they're admitting it's filled with errors. Can the book of God have errors? Exactly. This is a gift for you. Yeah, that book's gonna be really good for you as well. You've got that, right? Now, you have a lifetime to learn. Derek's going to be an excellent teacher with you. You're going to grow. You're going to have questions. But if you believe in that one God, if you believe in those prophets, you're a Muslim already. That's all there is to it. Do you believe in one God? Do you believe in the prophets? Okay. We're going to do your, we're going to do your Shahada. You're becoming Muslim today. Take all these. You will have a lifetime of learning. Don't worry. Okay. 
But to be a Muslim, you say the testimony. I'm going to say it, you're going to repeat after me. No. No. You, look, you have the belief. What else is there? You're just testifying. You, you, what I just asked you is exactly what you're going to say. You're going to say, I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship except one God. Right? That one Allah is the only one that should be worshipped. No people, no animals, nothing else should be worshipped. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. I believe, you're going to say, I believe that God sent prophets. Right? I believe that Muhammad was the last of those prophets. Right? This is the chain of prophets. You believe that? That's it. You're Muslim. That's exactly what we're going to do. Okay? And then he's going to teach you the rest at home. Right? <laughs> All right. So you want to do in Arabic first or English first? No. Whatever you want. English first. Okay. I bear witness that is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar, you're Muslim, that's it. See, exactly what you believe is what you have said, right? Now, hijab, prayer, all that questions you have, we have pamphlets, he will help you, we can have brothers and sisters keep in touch with you, no problem, you will grow. But this is a true belief, you, today is the greatest day of your life, better than the day you were born. Today, all your past has been wiped clean, right? Today, you have fulfilled the purpose of this life, of this test of this life, right? Today, and may Allah make you steadfast. If you're steadfast on what you have from today, this is what on the day of judgment will make you from those who are successful, all right? So, you want to do it in Arabic now? I'm, just pronounce after me. I got you. We're going to say, Ashhadu Al La Ilaha Illallah. You said it excellent. All right. And Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Abduhu Wa Rasulu. Allahu Akbar. That's it. You're Muslim. That's excellent. See, now you have 1.89 billion brothers and sisters around the world. You see this brother right here, Richard? He came to this table the same way. The same way you came, he had questions, he became a Muslim. You see this brother Ben, him and his wife took shahada here. You see that brother, his father became Muslim with us, alhamdulillah. So you see, this is how the truth grows, right? And anybody can try anything, but they can't stop the truth. It's like the sun rising, they can't stop it. They can curse at it, they can try to do whatever, but this is the great, this is the truth coming from your heart. And you know your whole life, you had that feeling of that one creator, you had that connection. This is what we call fitra, right? But you were waiting to find out. And Allah brought you from Washington here to find out. Alhamdulillah, you're Muslim. لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر 